uh, actually lived in the building next door to the Heartland Cafe, and uh, it was the Heartland Cafe's first catering job. We did the food for the movie Stony Island, and I play mean old Uncle Roy in that movie. That was my first uh, film. Mean and, old uh, Uncle Roy. I play a nasty uh, southern white guy beating up Corliss Leachman's son in the movie. It's, uh, it's my nephew. So that's going to be the fourth and fifth at the Gene Siskel Center, and hopefully we'll get Andy Davis up here to talk about that film. We have another guest coming up right now, and uh, we're honored to have him. It's Lynn Din, and he is uh, living in Philadelphia. He writes poetry, he writes books, he does photography. Good morning to you. Hi, how are you? Good morning, Good. Lynn. And, uh, Welcome. You Thanks. know, we were, we were not sure how many guests we would have, so Paul... Uh, figured well, let's get someone who's going to be at the Nelson Algren Memorial, uh, the birthday party actually. And I got a call from our good friend Warren Lemming this morning. He said he dropped you at the L. Yes. You were on your way and you got here. How was your L ride? <laughs> fine, fine. I'm a little exhausted because I've been traveling the whole uh, month actually. Wow. Where have you been where's, going? Where's home first uh, of all? Philadelphia. Philly, right. Yeah. Uh, I was down in Texas mostly. Uh huh. I have a fascination with the border area. So. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your, your visit down there. What did you see? What's going on? Uh, well, for the last three years, I've been doing this uh, photo and political essay uh, project. Uh, because I'm convinced the country is falling apart and I want to document it <laughs> firsthand, you know. Interesting so reaction. <laughs> I'm convinced the country is falling apart. <laughs> Where on the border? Uh, well, this time I was in El Paso and Juarez, but, uh, you know, I investigate just the whole Rio Grande, you know, Ojinaga and Presidio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we've had guests on this show who uh, participate in a, uh, a program called Basketball in the Barrio for the Segundo Barrio in El Paso. And uh, we go down there and work that basketball camp, which is really like a border education with young kids. And we always go across the border into Juarez. Uh, the last couple of years, people haven't wanted to. It's a... Uh, What's, your, what's the latest on the border down there? Is it, is, uh, has it gotten any better or are the things in Juarez worse than they were? Uh, I think the murder rates in Juarez have actually gone down slightly, <laughs> which is not saying much because it was so terrible. Really? Uh, I, I have a soft spot for Mexico because it's, in many ways it's, it's like Vietnam, you know. It's a, it's a country that's dominated by a much bigger neighbor, uh, the way Vietnam is with China, for example, right. or Good Russia, point. or the United States, etc. So uh, that, that's the fate of most of the world, you know. Uh, most countries uh, are compromised. Uh, you know, um, most people are not part of the empire. So I happen to live here, so th there's a paradox of me being here. I'm kind of like the house slave here, you know. Uh, so I reap some of the benefits Better of the empire. Better a house empire. slave than a field slave. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, I have to admit that, yes. No, I'm only <laughs> remembering Malcolm X. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, so... Um, uh, you, uh, I, I was I'm really glad to hear that you do photography. I think you're, uh, tonight you're, you're coming in mainly as a writer and a poet, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of your photography. I'm, I'm showing slides tonight, yes. Oh, good. And uh, tell us about some poems in your book, uh, your writings. Uh, well, my last book was a novel about 50 years into Vietnamese families. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's my last book. But I've, I published five books of poems. And um, I, I have become increasingly unhappy with being in the poetry community because... Uh, I realize uh, it has, poetry has become somewhat irrelevant in this country. Uh, I mean, no one reads poems. Uh, whenever I do a reading, the people in the audience are mostly uh, uh, aspiring poets, young, uh, young poets, you know, MFA students. So um, I don't see why poets shouldn't be public uh, intellectuals like they used to be. So uh, for the last few years, I've been trying to write political essays and publish them in uh, general interest uh, webzines, you know. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my essays um, are only published in, uh, in the fringe, you know. <laughs> I mean, I you, publish... You write for Counterpunch. Counterpunch and Common Dreams and and a few others, but I publish in The Guardian and New York Times, but like, uh, they, they tamper with what you write, most, I mean, especially in New York Times, you know, because it's the mainstream media. I mean, they're not there to tell the truth, they're there to, to corrupt you. The Guardian is better, but it, it has sort of gone right, too. So, I mean, it's also a compromise. So I don't get paid to do what I do. It's purely a labor of love. Uh, I write all these essays just because I want to write. I have to say something in this climate, so. 
Well, we're, we're going to look forward to reading more We're believers more of your stuff. in poetry up here. We are, we're actually on the stage of the open mic poetry uh, open mic that happens every, every Wednesday night. Every Wednesday, um, and I'm not sure if it's appropriate, but. Would you like to read one of your poems while you're here on the radio? Uh, I, I don't have anything. You don't have me. anything with you. Okay. Yes. Michael's daughter just graduated from college, and she's a poetry person as well. So don't give up. <laughs> and I have a son-in-law who's a published poet, too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so but we if, like poetry. But if you take, like, the Occupy movement, uh, right. it doesn't seem like they are, um, they are not inspired by any particular poet. Say, uh, as in the Tiananmen Square... Uh, uh, protests when they, had, they were um, uh, galvanized by Beidou, you know, so um, we don't have like an Allen Ginsberg now. We don't have a poet who can inspire the younger generation. So that, that is disturbing uh, to me. Have you been back to Vietnam? Yes, uh, three times. What's it like? I asked our previous guest, uh, you know, uh, you and I talked a little bit before the show and I I definitely come out of the 60s as a radical uh, into the 70s, and Vietnam was right in the middle of all of our activity. Uh, we looked to the Vietnamese and the struggle and the war going on there uh, often. What's your take on the country today? Uh, you've, you indicated that it is next to a, an overpowering neighbor. How is uh, Vietnam doing? How is uh, the reunification process happening? I know a lot of U.S. radicals go back there to visit, like Vietnam vets against well, the war. Well, and also former Former, former soldiers go and back there to, soldiers too. to heal their hearts. What's your take on the Vietnam today? Well, um, I find it interesting that there's this partnership between Vietnam and, uh, and the USA and China and the USA. In a sense, uh, these ruling elites have settled on, onto a kind of uh, arrangement where um, they can use slave labors, where they can use pure exploitation uh, to uh, pr produce goods for, for us house slaves here, you know. So... Yeah. Uh, in a sense, there's no um, contradiction at all. I mean, the U.S. needs uh, 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 China and Vietnam. You know, uh, this partnership between the, the, these capitalists and the supposed communists is a, a kind of inevitable marriage because it benefits the ruling elites of all these countries. Uh, and, and, and it's interesting, too, how they control the population. You know, these communist countries used to try to uh, ban everything. You know, romance novels, sci-fi, <laughs> pornography. But they, they are learning from us. They're learning from the USA. You know, allow all that in because that's how you control the population. Uh, uh, don't ban Lady Gaga. You know, flood them with just nonsense all the time. So that's where Vietnam is at now. You know, uh, it's pure exploitation and pure um, distraction all the time. The media is exploding over there. So that's why poets are not read in Vietnam either, you know. So have you ever been to one of the Nelson Algren uh, things before tonight? Uh, no, I haven't. This is oh, my you're first gonna time. like it. It's yeah. uh, it's a really good uh, it's a really good get down uh, sure. with uh, a lot of good folks. We covered it last week. So thank you for coming here, well, making the trip. Now I hope you enjoy a breakfast. <laughs> you can relax and and get to Chicago here sure, at the Heartland. Sure. sure. And um, well, let's talk some photo photography afterwards. Sure, sure. Yeah. I'm going to take them in the back and show them my border shots. Okay, All right. great, great. Be careful back there. <laughs> Let's have a big round of applause for Lindin. Okay. Lindin. Okay. Thanks. And he will be tonight at the Nelson Algren birthday party, which is over in Wicker Park. At St. Paul's on North Avenue. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, we're going to uh, bring up, up our next guest.